Let's go over a few things that can cause vibrations on these trucks, new or old. Okay, one. Uh, the easiest thing you can do is start with your tires. You would need one of those 20 ton bottle jacks from Harbor Freight, jacking up each wheel at a time right off the ground and then spinning it. And what you can do is you can put a hammer or something and put it right here and make a small gap. Spin the tire and if it's hopping like that, you're good. But if it's hopping like that, it's going to cause vibrations. You want to do this on all four tires. Another thing is to check up on your wheel bearings, okay? A really good way to check your wheel bearings to see what's going on is when you have a loaded trailer, when you come off the highway and pull into a rest area, walk around the truck and touch each hub with your hand. If one hub is extremely hot, you have wheel bearing problems. Also, when you have it jacked up, you can stick a pry bar under here and just step on it and see if you have free play with your wheel bearings. Now the axle springs, sometimes these bushings go bad. This one has a slight, very small gap, but some of them, the rubber is completely chewed up and that too could cause vibrations and misalignment. Now, if you do find out your tires are hopping, sometimes you can rotate one rim halfway and fix the, the hop by balancing it out. Also, you can rotate the tire halfway on the rim, and sometimes that works as well. If it's still vibrating, the next thing you want to look at is your drive line. Okay? Now, my airbags are dropped right now, and you'll see that, well, it might be hard to tell with the camera, but the drive shaft going from this axle to that axle is actually angled and it's dropping pretty far down in the back. So there's a pretty uh, steep angle on these U-joints. So for example, if I was going 65 miles an hour and I dropped my airbags and hit that angle, I would feel all sorts of vibrations coming out the back and it would be chewing up my U-joints. So you certainly don't want that. But sometimes you have to raise the airbags slightly more. So what I did on this one is I cut the stock airbag height leveling uh, stick right here and then I added a piece of metal in the middle and you see I put these uh, on there. So you don't want to make them too tight. Make them snug. Don't strip them out but it's a very easy way to adjust your airbag height. Now, okay, let's say you raise your airbags and you go under the truck and you look at the angles of that. So you might think, okay, we need to just make this straighter. But what you want to do is, you see the angle right here, okay? Let's say that's angled up, okay? We're talking about this part right here, this surface, okay? If that pinion, okay, if that is pointing up, let me zoom out and show you with my hand. If that is pointing up like this, then you want, you want this one pointing down, okay? It's not necessarily about, you want, you want the drive shaft sort of straight, but these angles, okay, the angle coming off here needs to point down and the angle coming off here needs to be the same angle. The angles have to be exactly the same because if they're not, what happens is this end of the drive shaft spins at a certain speed and this end spins at a different speed. And it can throw it off and that will cause vibrations. So here, here is a big problem on these trucks, okay? So for example, you're trucking and you want to make that angle better. So what you do is you raise your airbags. You're like, that'll fix it. But what you'll also notice is when you raise your airbags, this right here starts pointing up, okay? So now your pinion on this is pointing up, okay? Now if it's pointing up, you know what we just talked about. If this is pointing up, then it has to match the angle on this piece right here, OK? 
okay? Not this though, this piece. This angle has to match that angle. And the closer you get it, the better it is. So for example, let me show you right here, okay? The rear front drive axle, okay? I mean the, <laughs> the front front drive axle, okay? If that one, if you raise your airbags to make, you know, so your suspension can handle load and straighten out the drive shaft there, you now have this angle even more, okay? So in the front, if the front is like this, if this one is like that, that's no good. That can cause vibrations. And this is extremely heavy, okay? So it has to be like as close as perfect as you can possibly get it. And we didn't get into balancing yet, but you know, it has to be balanced perfect as well. So here's the rear angle. So what you have to do is you want, <laughs> you want the angles to match, okay? Just like this. You want the angles to match. So what do I have to do to get this front angle to match that rear angle, okay? This is what I have to do. Now, it may be a little confusing, but if you hold your hand, okay, it has to be tilted back, which means this has to come down to match the rear angle. And what you can do is you can put plates right up here and shim it to drop it down until this angle matches the rear angle. Now you want these angles to match. And another thing I left out is, yeah, make sure you, you joints have no free play, okay? They can't have free play, otherwise you're really not gonna get anything complete. Both drive shafts have to be balanced out, okay? This one was redone. They welded this on here to balance it. Now this may sound a little complicated, but if there was a way you could jack one wheel and spin it, it's a little confusing, but if you hang something off here and put a cup of water in here, you can actually see the vibrations by looking at the water in the cup. And there's guys, what they'll do is they'll take like a, a clamp, a hose clamp, and they'll put a little weight here, and they'll spin it, they'll check the cup, okay? And then they'll rotate the clamp a little more, and put the weight here, spin it, and they'll check the cup. And they'll keep checking it to see if they can fine tune and balance the drive shaft while it's in the truck instead of taking it out and putting it on a balancer or anything anyone can do this but if you're gonna do this really with an 18 wheeler your safest bet is probably taking the wheels off um, on one axle so then that hub just spins because when you jack this up and spin this I mean the weight of all this is this is definitely gonna cause a vibration um, and, uh, I mean, that's extremely dangerous, of course, because if it falls off the jack, phew, and I've seen it happen before, okay? <laughs> I had a long time ago, I had my girlfriend sitting in the truck, and it fell off the jack stand, and she was in it, and she did exactly what I trained her to do, which was put in neutral, push in the, push in the clutch, put it in neutral, pull a parking brake, take it out of gear. It was a long time ago. Shit was crazy. This girl literally almost flew out of the seat. All right, so there you have it. <clears throat> if you guys match your angles up and uh, your bearings are good and your wheels are good and and also, oh, I left out one thing here, okay? Your drum. When you tighten these brakes and you spin this, this gap between the brake shoe and the brake drum, it should be the same. It shouldn't be a gap that's growing and smalling getting smaller because if that's the case your drum is not centered but if your hubs are good your drums will be centered the hubs center the drums you can also center your rims if you have hub pilot rims so see right here I have a zip tie wedged between here and that actually was at the top when I put them in and then it prevented the rim from dropping all the way on the hub centering hub so I was able to center these rims and minimize the hop uh, much more than just uh, they would do in a sh
A couple other things that can cause vibration is your clutch. Sometimes they throw out springs, that can cause a vibration. If your engine dampener is bad, that can cause a vibration. But you would notice that if you're hauling freight and going up a hill, if the engine starts vibrating excessively when you're pulling up a hill, you have a bad um, engine crank dampener. Another thing to check, your carrier bearing, okay? This one was replaced recently. You'll see the rubber, you see the way it looks. It has the small little gaps there. Uh, typically, if they go bad, they start sagging. When they sag, they change the angle. And when the angle's changed, it can throw off your drive line. And it can have free play and shake around. Definitely push up on the drive shaft near your carrier bearing and see how much you can push up on the drive shaft. If it's too much, that's that has to be replaced.